Okay, so what we've got here is a chain set that's been through a storm. Before the storm, it probably had about 300 kilometers riding in, and then it spent a sustained three hours basically underwater at the weekend. So it's ready for a re-waxing. So the key indicators that it needs a re-waxing are that the color has started to fade from the white that it was, and it's starting to have a bit of a noise. You can hear a bit of a squeak come into the system when you're riding it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run a bit of wax off into my fingers and through the whole system. Just before I start, I'll show you that actually it doesn't retain much in the way of road filth. Spent a long time out on the road. There's very little dirt coming off on my hands after being out in the storm. Very little at all. So I'm just first and foremost rubbing some wax off through the system. Stage two. Agitate further. I'm just gonna run that whole thing through the cloth. To remove the wax off, I've just applied any leftover wax and the detritus from the road. Stage three, reapply the wax. First, I'm gonna make sure it's going onto the key pins, key rollers, so that's the top and bottom of the chain. That's priority number one. That's where you're gonna get all the lubrication from. So I'm just sitting on top of the chain and I'm running it through. You can run it either way. This way, you're less likely to lose a finger. I'm not applying loads at this stage. And applying just the first, first coating. Next bit, the most important bit, is getting it rubbed in at this stage. Getting it right, pushed right down into the pins before you do anything else. I'm just going to literally take my fingers and just massage it through the chain the whole way. That's getting it right down into the pins. And this is where you're going to get the real value from both the longevity and the speed of the wax. So the next stage I'm going to apply some to the outside of each part of the chain. Uh, the reason for doing this is uh, if you've got the coloured stick it's going to make it look really good. But also it's all, this, all the wax that spills over from the outside and basically kind of seals all the edges for a step later on when we melt it. That's really quite important. So we just let it kind of run over the outside as well. You don't have to be really thick but just a little coating on the outside becomes quite useful. And again I'm just rubbing it all in to completely coat the chain from all angles. So this is kind of how covered we want the chain to be when we're finished. Again, the reason we've done the outside plates is because everything that's kind of just falling over the outside onto the onto the lips here, that's all really useful to have in place. The next stage is we're going to give it a little bit of a wax off to help really set it and melt it into place. But if you haven't done those the outside of the chain, then you might not get everything covered on the rollers. So I like to do the whole way around just to be diligent. Little fourth step, fifth step. Apply a little bit more of the wax off on my fingers. Just a baby amount, just a super small amount, but a little bit of moisture on them. Nothing more than that's needed. And all I'm gonna do is run that around the chain just so I can just feel that it's just damp to the touch. And applying the, the melting agent to basically help the wax set into place. So it's basically gonna help melt a little bit of all so it sinks into where it's supposed to be. And that is basically the whole chain set done. Uh, ideally, you leave it now for a couple of hours before you ride it, but it's ready to go right away. That's gonna be like absolute butter next time I get on that. Except the rest of the bike's pretty dirty. Still get dropped though, mate. Still, obviously still getting dropped. Just not as quickly. <laughs>